begin this sweater by crocheting the back panel first. To start this sweater, I will be using this mohair yarn and a 15 millimeter crochet hook. You can really use any yarn and any hook for this sweater because of the design of it but this is what I will be using. So to start out, you're either going to chain a chain as long as you want for the drop of the shoulder. I will show you what that looks like. For me, I'm going to chain 35. Well, I'm actually not chaining, I'm using a foundation double crochet, but you can also chain and then double crochet in each one of those chains. It's whatever you want to do. But I like the look better of how a foundation double crochet looks. So I'm going to do that. But I will link a video down below on how to do a foundation double crochet if that's what you also want to do. So yeah, I'm just going to make 35 double crochets. I have my 35 double crochets, but again, that m number might be different for you depending on what yarn, what hook, and what size you are. Now, the next thing we're going to do is turn our work and then either chain two or to make what I like to do to make the edges cleaner. I stack two single crochets on top of each other. Again, you don't have to do this. This is just personal preference. I'll link down below where I learned this. I can show it. Just going to single crochet into the first stitch. And then you have these two bars right here. You're gonna go into the left one and then just work another single crochet. And now it's the height of a double crochet. And we're just gonna work double crochets into each stitch until the end of the row. So yeah, just double crochet into each stitch until the end of the row. Okay, and that's it for row two. Now for me, I'm going to crochet 17 rows total, but if you want your sweater longer or shorter, you can crochet more or less rows, but that's how many that I'm going to crochet. So continue repeating row two until you have as many rows as you want. Okay, I have finished my 17 rows and this is where I'll stop for my back panel and now we'll start the front panel. For the front panel, I already have my 35 double crochets. So you will chain or foundation double crochet the same amount of stitches as you did for the back panel. For me, that was 35 stitches. And I will repeat the same as I did for the back panel, but whatever length I did, I'm going to stop three rows short. So I'm going to crochet three rows less than I did for my back panel. So I crocheted 17 rows for my back panel. So for my front panel, I'm only gonna crochet 14 rows. So repeat the same process, but just crochet three rows less. After you have as many rows as you need, making sure again that it's three rows less than the back panel, we're going to map out where we want our neck hole to go. 
So next we're going to be working on the shoulder pieces. And this is where my head and neck will fit through. I left five stitches in the middle and there's 15 stitches on the sides. So that's great for me. And you can just hold it up to you and kind of roughly map out where you want your neck hole to go and where the shoulder pieces should be. You can make it a wider neck hole or a more narrow, whatever you want. Well, not too narrow because you won't be able to fit your head through. <laughs> so for me, I'm going to turn my work and either chain two or do the method like I was talking about where you stack two single crochets on top of each other. That's my first double crochet. For me, I'm going to double crochet into the next 12 stitches, but for you, if you have more or less stitches, you're going to work one double crochet into each stitch until you have two stitches remaining. So I'm not going to double crochet into the last two stitches. So for me, I'm just gonna work one double crochet into the next 12 stitches. I will have two stitches left unworked. All right, I have my two stitches here. And now I'm going to work a double crochet decrease or double crochet two together. So we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook, pick up a loop, yarn over, go through two. Then we're gonna yarn over and insert our hook into the next stitch. Pick up a loop, yarn over, go through two. Then yarn over and go through all three loops on your hook. So we just decreased by one stitch. Since I'm doing the like stack two single crochets on top of each other, I'm going to work my first single crochet and then I'm going to pick up a loop and not go through those last two stitches. And then I'm gonna yarn over and go into the next stitch. Pick up a loop, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through three. So I just decreased by another stitch right here. And then I'm going to work one double crochet into each stitch until the end of the row. You'll be able to see that we're decreasing and this is turning in right here. So we're going to work one more row and we're going to decrease the same way. So when we reach the last two stitches of the row, we're going to double crochet those together. And that's it for the right side. Now we're just going to roughly repeat the same thing on the other side. And I'll show you how to start that. To repeat that, we're going to make a slip knot and attach our yarn right here. And then we're going to stack the two single crochets on each other, but not finish the second single crochet because we're going to decrease with it. But again, this is less complicated if you're just chaining and working normal double crochets. So I'm not going to finish that one. And then I'm going to yarn over and insert my hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through three. And then I'm just gonna work one double crochet into each of the remaining stitches. Okay, so that was decrease row number one, and we're gonna work two more. 
So the same as what we did for the other side, I'm just going to work one double crochet into each stitch until I come to the last two stitches and then I'm going to double crochet those together and likewise for the next row I'm going to turn my work, double crochet the first two stitches together and work one double crochet into each stitch. Okay, and that is it for the front panel. Now starting for the sleeves, you can kind of make the sleeves whatever width you want. Just make a chain or a foundation double crochet and put it around your arm and feel how like loose or tight you want it. I wouldn't recommend doing it too tight so it won't be like up in your armpits or squeezing your arms. And since I'm going for a more oversized sweater, mine's going to be kind of loose. So I have a total of 25 double crochets here and I'm just going to work one double crochet into each stitch until I have 14 rows total. So I already have one here, so I'm going to work 13 more rows. When I have my 14 rows, I'm going to show you how to decrease to kind of make the sleeve more of a bubble sleeve. So just crochet a little bit shy of where you want the length to be on your sleeve and I will we'll be back here when I have my 14 rows. I have my 14 rows. So now we're going to start decreasing near where your hand comes out to give it more of a puffy bubble effect. So what we're going to do, we're going to decrease every stitch. We're going to double crochet two together in every stitch across for our first one. I'm going to do my single crochet stack but not finish and then go into the next stitch, go through all three and I'm just going to keep repeating that. So we're just going to work double crochet decreases in every stitch. So continue doing that until the end of the row. And for the last row of your sleeve, we are going to work half double crochets across the row but we're going to work a sequence of one half double crochet and then half double crochet two together half double crochet half double crochet two together so I'll show you what that's like we're gonna chain one we're going to work a normal half double crochet and then in the next two stitches we're going to half double crochet two together and then in the next stitch work one half double crochet and then in the next two half double crochet two together And you're just going to repeat that until the end of the row. And that is it for your sleeve. And just repeat this process for the second sleeve. And then we're going to seam all the pieces together. Now I have my two sleeves, my front panel and back panel. So next, I'm just going to seam these all together. I'm going to use single crochet to seam them all together. You can use whatever seaming method you want, but that's what I'll be using. And if I can find a tutorial on how you can do that, then I'll link it down in the description below. But yeah, now you just need to seam all of your pieces together. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but this is just so fluffy and magical. I now have all my panels seamed together 
You can leave it like this, but I'm going to add a ribbed collar here. Just gonna grab your yarn. And then I'm gonna start in the back. And I'm just gonna work single crochets around the whole neck hole to make it easier to work my ribbing. And when I come to the sides of the double crochets, I'm just going to work two double crochets into each post, kind of just evenly distribute it. So this is one double crochet post. So I put one right here and I'm just gonna work another one roughly right here. And then this is another one. So I'm gonna work one here. and then one right here. So right here there's three rows of double crochet, so roughly six stitches along the side. And yeah, just continue working single crochet until the end of the round and you come back to the beginning. All right, I just worked in to the last stitch so I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch that I created. And from here, we're gonna start working our ribbing. So for my ribbing, I'm going to make it eight stitches tall or wide. So I'm going to start by chaining nine. The ninth chain is going to be our turning chain. You can make your ribbing however wide you want. You can just make a shorter ribbing or no ribbing at all. So I'm going to skip the first chain and just single crochet in to each chain. And after you finish that, the first stitch is where this first single crochet part is coming out of. So we're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches. And then we're going to turn our work, skip the two slip stitches you just created, and then work in the back loop only of each stitch until the end of the row. So it's kind of hard to see with this yarn, but there's two braids here, two loops. And we're going to go in the back one only, not the front one, the back loop only. And then work your single crochets. And when you're at the end of the row, you're gonna turn your work, chain one, and then work in the back loop of every stitch until the end of the row. And then you're going to repeat the same thing you did a minute ago. You can see that this stitch was already worked in. So we're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches. And then you're just going to repeat that process. So you're going to slip stitch in the next two stitches, turn your work, skip those two slip stitches, work one single crochet in the back loop only, of all your ribbing, chain one, turn around, work in the back loop only of every single stitch, and then again, 
slip stitch into the next two stitches and just repeat that until you finish the ribbing all of the way around. Okay, I just finished the ribbing and I cut my yarn. So I'm going to fasten that off and then I'm just going to use this tail to sew these two sides together. I'm just going to use a whip stitch. You can connect it however you like and I will come back here after I finished. And that is it for this sweater. For the collar, if you want, you can fold it in and then sew it for a little folded collar. Or you can leave it tall like a turtleneck or you can fold it over like a turtleneck. You can really do whatever you want. But yeah, that is it. 